Ramadan Karim to everyone. My name is Peter. I work with al -Futem. My question, first question, I have a few questions to ask. Who is God? Brother has a question. Who is God? And this is the same question that was asked by the Christians to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was, what should I answer? We can keep on speaking about God. Then the revelation came. Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Kul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufana. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God given in the Quran. Any candidate you say is Almighty God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The first is, Kul hu Allahu ahad. Faith Allah and only. Number two, Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufanat. There is nothing like him. This is the four-line definition of Almighty God. Whoever you worship and say is God, if he fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as God. Hope that answers the question. Okay, if I do say God is a strength, for instance, I give an example just to explain to my point. If it's raining, just leave aside the scientific way of rain, how it comes. The rain, how it forms, and how it rains, and how it ends, can I just say that's God? Just leave aside the scientific way. Brother, I said that if I just say how it rains, leave off it scientific. If I say that is God, is it correct? No, it's not correct. It goes against the definition of God I gave you. What you can say, it is from God, min Allah, no problem. Okay. But you can't say that is God. Rain is not God. Is he one? No. Begets not. It contradicts most of the definition of Surah Ikhlas. What you can say, it is from God, min Allah, no problem. Hope that answers the question. Okay. And, uh, my name is Soumya and uh, working in the field of media for the last two years over here. My question is related to media itself. That uh, as not been told by you that uh, media has created a perception or a wrong uh, perception of Islam. And uh, as in uh, the people they are believing that uh, Islam is blind uh, uh, due to this media. But uh, my question is that uh, right now, as in, uh, you can take an example of India, the uh, percentage of the literate people is more than the percentage, is very minimum as in the illiterate peoples. So no one is really forcing the literate peoples to follow that particular news of blah, 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 shit. But uh, they are believing that uh, what they are seeing on that particular media, could you please uh, tell me that how media is making the people wrong perception of Islam? Well, that was the question that how is media creating a wrong perception of Islam? Whether I give a full talk, full talk explaining the media is saying things which doesn't exist in Islam. And I've given the talk on media and Islam war or peace. It's a full talk. And giving various strategies used by media. What does media do? Media picks up the black sheep of the Muslim community and they portray as though they're exemplary Muslims. What does media do? Media quotes verses of the Quran out of context. Media says things about Islam that don't exist in Islam. Media says women are subjugated. Where are they subjugated? I've given a full talk and speech on this topic. Media and Islam, war or peace. Please see that cassette and that was the talk I had given last time when I was called by the Dubai International Holy Quran Award. That was four years back. You can surely take the DVD and see it, inshallah. The next question.